Oh, what is this? All right, test the capabilities of this rod. A little bit of a belly flop, but he'll also be okay. Those are tough fish. What's up guys? So currently here in California, I don't know about other states in this country, but for sure in California, a lot of the beaches are either partially closing down or fully closing down. So today I'm gonna bring you a video where I catch fish in the surf without even touching the sand or the beach. How do I do that? You're about to find out. So here's the setup I'm gonna be using for today's video. It's my normal surf fishing setup with a Carolina rig tied on. So that's about, I'm not sure exactly how big it is. It's probably around an ounce, three quarter or an ounce sliding bullet sinker to a bead to a swivel, and then about a three foot liter, this is 15 pound mono, to a really small, for the surf at least, size two mosquito hook. And on this hook, I'm gonna put on some sand crabs and toss it right out past these railings right here. If you can't tell already, I'm on a pier. So I don't know if I've done a pier fishing video before on my channel, I don't think I have, so, um, normally when you're fishing the surf, you know, you're fishing right in this wave break right where the sand crabs are getting washed up. And that tends to be where the predatory fish, surf perch, striped bass are hiding out. And pier's no different. So I don't need to go to the end of the pier where it's deep. Actually, I find that the most productive areas are right in close where these waves are breaking. So I'm gonna cast my sand crabs right in here. See if we can find a surf perch or two. So all I'm gonna do Literally just give this a flick out there. Let it sink to the bottom. And wait for the hit. One thing that's nice about pier fishing is it's super relaxing. I mean, you're not getting bumped by the waves. You're not getting, you know, you're not gonna get seasick on a pier. No need to walk the beach. Kind of just sit and wait. You know, some say it's boring, but to me this is nice and relaxing, especially after my last video where I paddled miles and miles. It's nice to have a nice relaxing video to change it up now. I'm just going to let this sit this right here. Sit down, reel in the slack, sit back and relax. Oh, getting a bite, getting a bite. Oh, oh, he's on there. What do we have? Oh, there we go. All right, guys. So that right there is a little barred surf perch. Give it a little light there. Nice little specimen. They do get a heck of a lot bigger than this, and they are actually really good eating, but this one, just a little baby. But first fish of the day, first species. Get him on his way. See if there's anything else down there. So I don't know if you noticed for that fish or not, but just dropped it straight down, didn't even cast it out at all. And actually I find that a lot of times when you're fishing off the pier, a lot of the fish are actually close or even under the pier, probably because those pilings they not only provide uh, protection from predatory fish, they also have like clams and mussels and stuff on them, so it's a nice food source as well. So let's drop a deck down here, see if there's another one. Get it back down to the bottom. Oh, another bite, another bite. Got him. Ooh, a little bit bigger. Oh, okay, what is this? All right. Second fish of the day, and this one right here is a white croaker, also known as kingfish. We call them kingfish in the Bay Area. This is actually really good bait in my experience for lingcod, halibut, other predatory fish. This is like a bite-sized one. If I was in the kayak, this would be perfect bait for whatever it is else out there. But lucky for him, we're just fishing off the pier today, so he's gonna get to live another day. 
reason why they call these croaker is actually when they're stressed, they actually kind of, I don't know how they do it, but some something in their head like pulses and you can feel, you actually feel it's like a drum beat. Yeah, you can feel it in the head there. Interesting little fish. They got the mouth on the bottom of their head right there because a lot of their food that they're eating, they're just sucking it up off the bottom of the ocean floor. Kind of similar to if you're on the east coast or in the gulf, redfish. These are closely related, but obviously these don't get as big. So anyways, back we'll go. All right, that's species number two and fish number two. Let's see if we can get number three. Oh, there's a bite. Missed it. Oh, no, nope, it's on there. Oh, no, missed it. Oh, no, it is on there. <laughs> All right, well, that is the smallest fish of the day. This is a, a bullhead, AKA, I think it's called a staghorn sculpin, I think is like the actual scientific name or whatever, but these are interesting fish. I mean, uh, they're kind of small, but they got big. I don't know if you can see that when you press, when you grab them, they have these like horns that come up on the side of their head. And yeah, they're pretty sharp. I mean, it's one of their defense mechanisms. Like if a fish were to eat them, they'll, you can see that they stick it up and just, it'll just like stab them in their mouth. And hopefully for these guys, hopefully that fish that's biting onto them will let them go. Once I press on his head, yeah, you can really see those horns stick up when they feel threatened. But anyway, third fish, third species. A lot of interesting fish out here. Not a lot of people like to fish out here because there's not that many big, you know, game fish, but there's some cool fish out here. A lot of diversity. Well, that's three fish, all different species, all using the same tactic, all while sitting I haven't moved my butt one time and uh, all within the span of like 30 minutes. So we'll see what's out, what else is out here. Nice relaxing day out here. I mean, to be honest, even if I didn't catch anything, just out here enjoying the sun, enjoying the outdoors while avoiding the beach, um, it's a nice day. Nice day for sure. how easy this is. Just drop it down, hit the bottom, wait for the bite. Oh, there's a bite. Got him. Ooh, that one's a little bigger. There you have it, that's our biggest fish of the day. Still not a giant, probably about eight or nine inches. Another barred surfer, it's just the same species as the first one that we caught. This one right here is a male. Tell the males have this, I don't know, it's kind of like rubber, this fin right here. But a nice specimen. These get up to about 18 inches is probably the biggest you'll get on here on the California coast. Like I said, really good eating. Another one of the surf perch species. But this one's still a little bit small. If it was maybe 10 inches, I'd consider keeping it. But this one, we'll let him get, live another day. All right, bro. Go swim to be. 
Ooh, a little bit of a belly flop, but he'll be okay. So if you're fishing in the surf on like a sandy beach, that barred surf perch would be the main species that you would catch. Those are like 90, well, unless you're in Northern California, actually. Northern California also has red tail. So between the barred and the red tail, that's probably like 95% of the surf perch that you would catch. But if you're fishing near a pier or like near a kelp bed or some kind of structure, some rocks, um, there's a ton, there's probably like 10 to 15 different species of surf perch. There's walleye, silver, rainbow, rubber lip, calico. I mean, there's all, there's countless different species. So a lot of different opportunities. Oh, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's a ray. Thornback ray. Well, fourth species. We'll see if my 15 pound test can lift him here. All right, we'll test the capabilities of this rod. There we go. There you go. Now you probably can't see it in the video, but the reason they call this a thornback ray is, well, you can see these for sure, especially on the tail. It's got thousands and thousands of little, basically little thorns sticking up. Even on the fins here, a bunch of little thorns sticking up. I don't think they're venomous. I'm not 100% sure, but you wouldn't want to step on it, that's for sure. Do some damage to your foot. Anyway, fourth species. Fifth fish, I guess. Even though this is kind of like a ray. All right. See how this one fares. A little bit of a belly flop, but he'll also be okay. Those are tough fish. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap it up for this video. A little bit more of a relaxing vibe as opposed to my previous videos that I've been putting out on the kayak. Definitely a lot more casual out here on the, the wharf. You know, a lot of people will frown on wharf fishing, but I mean, when the weather's nice like this, it's a nice relaxing day out here. And as I showed in this video, there's plenty of different fish you can catch on the pier. I mean, you know, in saltwater, there's thousands of different species out here on the California coast. And I'd say there's hundreds of them you can catch off of a wharf. Just throw on a high-low rig, maybe some shrimp, Carolina rig. Um, in this video, I was using a Carolina rig with some sand crabs, but you don't even need to catch sand crabs. You can buy shrimp at the, your local grocery store, put it on a hook, throw it out here, and I'm sure you catch something. Anyways, if you like this video, let me know in the comment section below. I mean, it's a lot easier than filming a kayak fishing video, so I would gladly come out here and film more of these if you guys are interested. Appreciate your guys' view. Hope you guys are staying safe out there, and until the next video, thanks for watching.